If you're anything like I was when I first started trying to complete the Corrupted Gauntlet, you're probably already familiar with the mechanics of the fight and have no issue completing the regular Gauntlet. But you're struggling with completing the Corrupted Gauntlet because you either can't get all the equipment you want during the prep phase, or you're struggling to survive long enough during the fight itself and running out of food. If that's you, this guide is for you. I'm not going over the basic details of the Gauntlet or the mechanics of the Hunya fight since I'm assuming you're already familiar with those. Instead, I'll be giving you tips on what I did to get consistent completions of the gauntlet. Ever since I adopted the strategy I'll be covering here, I very rarely fail my prep or the fight. Know that this is not a guide for getting the fastest kills, the focus here is on getting them consistently. This guide is separated into three parts, some general tips at first, followed by the prep phase strategy, and finally the strategy for the fight itself. You can find the timestamps for these chapters below. I will also have cheat sheets at the end of the latter two sections where I will summarize everything that I talk about there easily so you can easily refer to all those tips later on. Starting with general tips, I really only have two to talk about. The absolute number one is to get comfortable with F keys. If you're not familiar with this, you can go to your settings in game and under controls you will see the ability to bind all the tabs in your interface to a different F key. Those are the keys at the top of your keyboard. This stops you from having to move your mouse up to say the prayer tab and then back down to switch prayers. Instead, you can quickly switch between your inventory and prayer tab while keeping your mouse in the same general area. It might sound silly because, well, moving your mouse to switch tabs isn't that much mouse movement, right? I used to think the same, but in practice after trying it, I found that it makes a surprisingly big difference. If you want to use something other than your F keys, you can use Runelight's key remapping plugin to change these to whatever you want. I personally have my inventory and prayer tab bound to A and D because, well, after 10 years of playing Counter-Strike, I've gotten pretty good at spamming those two keys. I heard ADAD and got Attack fucked. Commences in 30 seconds. The next tip is quite simply get your combat stats up. While Corrupted Gauntlet can be done with surprisingly low stats, having higher stats simply makes you less likely to fail due to bad RNG and can really be the make or break when you're starting out. The most important two stats are definitely your magic and range levels, although good melee stats do help speed up prep a little bit, and higher defense and prayer levels will reduce how many supplies you need during the fight against the Hunyif. While there are no hard numbers, I've personally found these stats that I have to work just fine. The wiki recommends at least 85 in each offensive stat, so that's probably a good place to aim for. Okay, now to talk about actually doing the gauntlet. The strategy I found works really well for balancing consistent prep and consistent fights is getting a full set of tier 2 armor and doing the 5 to 1 method in the fight. You may have already heard about this 5 to 1 method and how it's an advanced strategy, but I promise you it's actually not complicated at all and you'll get into the rhythm of it after just a few attempts. And it's really worth learning because it makes the prep phase as easy as possible since you will have to find at most two demi bosses and usually just one, which saves you a lot of time from running around the edge of the map and potentially just getting really unlucky on finding them. So, our goals for the prep phase are to get the following. A full set of tier 2 armor, one perfected bow or staff, and then one of the other weapon in basic form, two annual potions, and 20 paddlefish. Some nice to haves that aren't necessary but do help slightly in order of importance, a basic halberd, 4 extra paddlefish, some corrupted paddlefish, an extra annual potion, and the tuned weapons instead of basic ones. Don't go out of your way to get these nice to haves, only make them if you have extra time or supplies once everything else is ready. In order to make the items we want, we have to find 7 of each friend bark, ore, and linum tyrannum, 2 weapon frames, either an orb or bowstring, 2 grim leaves, 20 raw paddlefish, and 440 crystal shards. An extra weapon frame, some extra paddlefish, and extra crystal shards definitely don't hurt. Now, I want to just clarify that there are no hard rules for what to do to get these. The rooms in the gauntlet are randomly generated, so you need to be able to make some on-the-fly decisions on what to do based on the hand you're dealt. But I will talk about general tips and strategies to employ that will let you consistently finish your prep on time regardless of where things spawn. So, here's the basic strategy. From the starting room, enter one of the two rooms closest to the Hunyif's room. We're going to make a quick little loop of these three rooms to start off and gather the necessary items we need. Fight any monsters you find, grab up to seven of any resources you find, and up to two grim leaves. If you come across some fishing spots, I recommend only catching four paddlefish for now and leaving the rest for later so as to not clog up your inventory. Once you've gathered seven bark or ore, make sure to drop your axe or pickaxe respectively to free up inventory space. When you're in the second room, make sure to illuminate the room on the edge as well to get a peek in and see if there's a demi boss. If there is one, don't go fight it just yet but keep its location in mind. Once you're done with the third room, similarly illuminate the room on the edge and then run back to the starting room. If you got any paddlefish, drop them by the range for now. If you have a weapon frame, the first thing you want to make is a basic staff or bow. Your pick. 
If you saw a dragon or dark beast in one of the edge rooms, I suggest making the one that corresponds to that demi boss, a bow for the dark beast and a staff for the dragon. Then make yourself two vials for 20 shards. If you have at least three of each material and at least 120 more shards, you can make yourself a full set of tier one armor and equip it. Regardless of if you made armor or not at this point, drop your remaining friend bark or and linum terinum by the singing bowl for now. What you do next depends on how your first loop went. In general though, you want to focus on getting your perfected weapon and full tier two armor before focusing on fishing, but obviously you can do both simultaneously. If you didn't find a weapon frame or you're missing one of the armor resources, I suggest looping around the two remaining rooms nearest the starting room, illuminating some of the adjacent ones if necessary in order to get yourself a basic weapon and tier one set made as fast as possible. If you spotted a demi boss in one of the edge rooms that you illuminated, you can go fight it to get the material needed for the perfected weapon. If there weren't any, I suggest going to the edge in the opposite direction of the first room you went to to get more fresh edge rooms as fast as possible. Now, if the first demi boss you fight is a dragon or dark beast, then you don't need to worry about any further demi bosses and can just ignore any additional ones you come across. However, if it was a bear, you'll have to find a second demi boss to get yourself either a bowstring or an orb. Also, if at any point you come across some mid-level monsters, you typically won't need to kill more than one to ensure you get enough shards for everything, but if you are finding yourself short on shards, then they are the fastest way to get a large quantity of them. At some point during your second loop, grind your shards into 20 dust and drop the pestle and mortar. Fill up your vials at a fishing spot and make your annual potions as soon as possible to free up inventory space. Continue running around the map on your second loop until you have either a bowstring or orb, all the necessary resources to make tier 2 armor, and the remainder of your inventory filled with raw paddlefish. Then teleport back to the starting room. Make your perfected weapon, tier 2 armor, and if you're missing either a basic bow or staff, then make that as well. If you don't have enough crystal shards to make everything, drop your remaining resources by the singing bowl for now. If you found a third weapon frame along the way, you can make a halberd as well. You can drop paddlefish to make room to pick up the resources you left previously at the singing bowl. At this point, all you should have left to do on your third loop is to stock up on paddlefish and maybe some extra crystal shards if you're missing them for certain items. If you found some fishing spots near the starting room early on or have some unexplored rooms left nearby, you can quickly run to them and run back to the starting room. If you have to venture further out and you have the crystal shards for it, prioritize making another teleport seed to save time getting back. Also keep in mind any paddlefish you might have dropped in the starting room earlier and factor them into how many more you'll need to get at this point. If you don't have any extra fish in the starting room and have time to get full inventory, you can drop two paddlefish at the last fishing spot, fill your inventory up, then drop your scepter and harpoon to make room to pick those two paddlefish up. Unless you don't have a halberd, since you'll want to have either a halberd or a scepter in the fight with the Hunyif. Go back to your spawn room and cook up your fish. If you have extra crystal shards and some time left over, you can optionally make attuned weapons and some corrupted paddlefish. These corrupted paddlefish will heal less, but they can be combo eaten with regular paddlefish, similarly to Karambwan. This will decrease the amount of time you spend eating and increase the amount of time you will spend doing damage. One last thing to note before entering the Hanyas room is that ideally you don't want him to be standing against one of the walls in order to give yourself more room to maneuver around him during tornado attacks. If you have some time to spare, I suggest waiting for him to move away from the walls before entering the boss room, especially if he's right by the door since you don't want him to immediately hit you with a melee attack at the start of the fight. As promised, here are the cheat sheets that summarize everything I talked about in this section. You can come back to this part of the video if you ever want to quickly refer back to this information, or just take some screenshots now and have them on your computer. Okay, now it's time to talk about the fight itself. Having tier 2 armor really helps with the survivability, since in addition to lowering the Hunyif's max hit against you, it also provides better defensive bonuses, which means a higher chance to get hit a zero. If you didn't have time to enter the room at an opportune moment and the Hunyif is standing against one of the walls, I really recommend running to the opposite corner in order to pull him off the wall and give you space behind him to maneuver later in the fight. The 5 to 1 method I talked about earlier essentially exploits how the Hunyif's protection prayer mechanic works. He'll change protection prayers every 6th time you attack him with a style that he's not praying against. We'll take advantage of this by attacking with our perfected weapon 5 times and then switching to one of our other weapons for the 6th attack, making him never pray against the style we have a perfected weapon for. So for example, if I have a perfected bow and the Hanyaf starting the fight by praying melee, I'm going to attack him 5 times with the bow and then once with my staff. He will then be praying magic and I'm going to attack him again 5 times with the bow and then I'm going to attack him with my halberd. You're going to repeat this pattern up until the end of the fight. The exception of course is if he's praying against that style at the start of the fight, in which case just attack him 6 times with one of your other weapons to start. This strategy means you have to keep count of your attacks to know when to switch styles. Don't worry about counting his attacks since he has a very obvious visual and audio cue of when he switches attack styles that you can simply react to. 
If you ever lose count in the later parts of the fight when things get more hectic, say you don't know if that was your 4th or 5th attack with your perfected weapon, I suggest switching to your other weapon early until he switches prayers. Better to be safe and attack him twice or thrice with your weak style than having him pray against your good style for 6 attacks. During the fight, you of course want to prioritize avoiding damage. That means your priority is always to ensure that you have the correct protection prayer up, that you're standing on a safe tile, and that you're running from tornadoes. You also never want to walk under him since he will hit you with a melee attack that can do some heavy damage. This is why we wanted to move him away from the wall, since we want to have that empty space behind him to run in during tornadoes. Speaking of the tornadoes, keep in mind that you can run through them if they're one or two tiles away from you without taking any damage. I'm currently working on a separate video to explain why this works in more detail and it'll be up in the card if that video has come out. If not, subscribe if you'd like to see it when it's ready. Of course, avoiding damage isn't the only thing you need to do, since a lot of the damage in this fight is unavoidable. Eventually your supplies will run out, so you want to finish the fight as soon as possible. This is why it's important to increase the amount of damage you deal. What's nice about the 5 to 1 method is that you don't have to worry about switching offensive prayers since you're mostly attacking with one style. Make sure to use Eagle Eye or Mystic Might, and alternatively Rigor or Augury if you have them unlocked. Note that these latter two drain prayer twice as fast, and if you don't have a very high prayer level, two annual potions probably won't be enough to have them up the whole time. So you might need to lazy flick them a bit on your attacks, particularly at the beginning of the fight. Mechanically speaking, there are two main ways to increase the damage you're dealing. Number one is to minimize how often you eat during the fight, since each time you eat you incur an attack delay. This is why having some corrupted paddlefish can be handy, since they let you heal up more health in less time by combo eating them with regular paddlefish. Also, ideally, the best time to eat is before you have to hit the Hanyif with a melee attack, particularly if the current active tiles or tornadoes don't let you run straight towards him, since you're not wasting any DPS by eating at this time. The Halberd is a nice to have because it has an attack range of 2 tiles, unlike the Scepter which only has an attack range of 1 tile. Sometimes the glowing tiles will completely surround the Hanyif and you won't be able to safely hit him with the Scepter, so in case you don't have a Halberd, just be careful of this. Now obviously, don't risk too much health, since if you get comboed out by tornadoes, then you lose the full 10 minutes that you've done up until this point. So don't be shy to eat if necessary. Obviously, avoiding taking damage also minimizes how much you need to eat, which once again reinforces avoiding damage as being your main priority. The second thing you can do to increase your damage is to continue attacking while moving. A lot of players only run around while the tornadoes are active, but if you do that you will spend nearly half the fight not dealing any damage and make it drag on for way longer increasing the likelihood that you run out of supplies. When you have a bit of a gap between you and the tornadoes and are standing on safe tiles, make sure to click on the Hanyif to attack every 4 ticks and then continue moving. This will greatly improve your chances of surviving long enough to defeat the Hanyif. Same as with the prep phase, here's my cheat sheet that summarizes my tips for fighting the Hanyif. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I wish you the best of luck in the Corrupted Gauntlet, I think it's mechanically a great piece of content in old school and I found getting good at it to be a really rewarding challenge. Thanks for watching, and remember to post on Reddit about how dry you are when you don't have an enhanced seed after 407 kills.